that's incredible information. That's that's dope. Yeah. I love it. Who would have known that uh, the, that deaf people have had such an impact on sports? Hey, I'm A.D. Dolphin. I am Rashid Kareem Shatty. And welcome to another episode of Fact or Fiction. Ready, fight. Now this week, you guys, guess what? I'm down two games to Rashid. I know. You can't believe it. I can't believe it. This week, it's my birthday, a special day, so I'm going to pour it on extra on AD today. So I see you brought your glasses today. The Clark Kent, Clark, wait, wait. Clark Kent glasses today? It gives me powers, I feel. No, it doesn't. I feel a little it's smarter. Not, it's not going to help you today. All right, Rasheed, I got a question for you. Do you know anything about deafness? Me personally, no. You want to know why? Because I hear loud and clear. It's the sayings I hate the most from you. Fact or fiction, football huddles were invented by deaf players. That's a fact, because it makes sense. You played football, right? Oh, I was cold. <laughs> I find that so hard to believe, but go on. You ever see players in a huddle draw up the play on their hands? That right there is because the deaf guys, they don't know what's going on. So the quarterback has to draw out the play in the huddle and he has his guys shielding it from him. All right, all right. Rashid, unfortunately, you are right. You're starting it off right. It is a fact. Awesome. It was actually invented by a guy named Paul Hubbard. He was a quarterback who invented the huddle in 1892. He was playing <laughs> for the Gallaudet University, which is a college of deaf and hard of hearing people. They're a powerhouse, I hear. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but to be honest, usually your antidotes, it doesn't really work for me. Sure. But I kind of see where you were going with that one now. He didn't want the other guys on the other team to recognize his deaf hand signals. So therefore, that's when they created the huddle. Okay, now did you ever play any football at all? Not at all. <laughs> I know level, it was always basketball. I've, I never played, but to be honest, I felt like I would have been great. You think so? Quarterback, 6'4" perfect height, I would have been able to throw a spiral like no other. Wow, and would you, would you consider yourself mobile? You think you could, we could, we could run a read option with I'm you? one of the fastest people on earth. Fact or fiction, less than 10 million people under the age of 65 are at risk of hearing loss. Wow, wow. You know what's so crazy? Have you ever heard of Mr. Beast? Oh yeah. He basically posed this question to people out there like, if they had this certain type of hearing problem, he was able to fix it permanently. I'm saying that is absolutely a fact. And I'm banking on this because of Mr. Beast. That's really beautiful. But you should unsubscribe to him. <laughs> this is fiction. Fail. 10 million is not a lot. Well, lady, I'll try to- Give I'll me the facts. <laughs> Give me the facts. facts. So here's the deal. So it's actually more than 30 million people under uh, the age of 65 that have lost hearing. So it was more people. More people. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's tr tricky with the number. Uh, I would have 30 million. I would still have win with that. <laughs> it's mostly noise-induced hearing loss. Makes sense. Basically, loud sounds damage tiny hairs inside your ears. You cannot afford to lose those because once they're gone, they ain't never coming back. Oh, wow. So once you lose those hairs, that's it? It's over? Oh, that's all she wrote. They're gone for good. Damn. So hearing... No concerts for me. <laughs> so you're not going to be at a concert, but here's another thing, AD. The club, it can be dangerous too. Do you think it's a good look if you wear earplugs to the club? If you're trying to get lucky that night, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I was wondering why nobody was <laughs> Because they say it's important to use ear protection when you're around noise, loud, noisy places. Fact or fiction, there used to be another sign language in America. That's what inspired hand signals in baseball. So you're saying there was like another type of sign language? Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna say fact because those guys are pretty pretty proficient and nice with the with They're the signals. They're nice with it, right? <laughs> They're good. Do you have, I mean, did you play baseball? <laughs> no, hell no, I, I was terrible at baseball. And I hated it, too. It just wasn't for you? It wasn't for me. I well, thought it was whack. thank wack. God it wasn't for you because your answer wasn't for me. 
and it was <laughs> fiction, actually. Game over. There is no other uh, sign language that was going on in America, okay? I knew that was gonna throw you, Man. and I'm so glad the producers put that in there. Have to put a little something in their, in their stocking this year for that. They're actually in the 1800s, believe it or not, there were some major leaguers that were actually deaf and they actually taught their sign language to their other teammates. That's how they would communicate actually on the field. And the umpires, the sign language that they were using was also ASL. And that's the American Sign Language. To me, that's crazy because we're, we're just taking a lot of these things for granted and not knowing where they stem from. And to me, that, that's incredible information. That's, that's dope. I love it. Who would have known that, uh, the, that deaf people have had such an impact on sports? You said something smart. I don't even know what to do with myself <laughs> right now. Like, that was so brilliant. Thank you so much. You know what that shows? That I'm rubbing off on you. Fact or fiction? I need this one. Deaf people tend to get stuck at a fourth grade reading level? That's such a great question. I'm gonna say that's false. What's your reasoning? This doesn't sound good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like when people are faced with challenges like that, they're gonna go above and beyond. Damn, that's, that's inspirational. You seem like you're on pins and needles. I <laughs> honestly wanna switch my answer because you're giving it away so much. Well, I like, I'm just feeling, I, I'm like inspired and I'm motivated because I like what you're saying, that people will overcome the challenges that they're presented with. <laughs> but AD. They're not. <laughs> On this show, you did not overcome that challenge. This is actually a fact, if you can Fourth believe grade. it. Fourth grade. Winner. Here's the deal. The most important part of learning how to read is understanding which symbols go with which sounds. I can see that. I might even be at a fourth grade reading level right now, and I hear crystal clear, like I said. <laughs> so kids with no hearing have few or no sounds to go off of. So deaf kids who know how to sign have to learn the connection between the signs and the letters. So it's essentially as if they're learning to read in a second language. So the more signs, lip reading, and sounds that kids are able to perceive, okay. the easier it will be for them to learn how to read. Unfortunately, a lot of deaf kids don't learn to sign until they're a little older because 95% of them have hearing parents. So they don't learn to sign until they're a little wow. older. Little kids, those brains are like sponges. <laughs> Mine is like a dense rock. And the birthday boy is victorious. <laughs> Ah, we're up three now. Hey, that was a present from me to you, <laughs> trust me. This is starting to get a little out of hand, and we've only got four. <laughs> <laughs> we had it, what, four what? Four more shows? Four more episodes left. No, four more. I'll catch you in four episodes. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, pose it in the comment section, and we'll get back with you. Other than that, I'll see you next week.